Hello there, friends. Welcome back. You may notice that my hands are a little larger in the frame today than they usually are. And that's because we're going to do some close-up tinkering and chatting today. I'm going to spend a small amount of time with this fellow here. This is generally called a sundial compass. It's a very small, mostly ornamental or decorative uh, piece, I would say although I have seen pictures of much larger versions of these, more precise versions, I suppose. I've even seen versions with three little feet coming off the uh, edges with little set screws in them that will let you precisely level this device, but this one is just mostly for decoration. It was given to me as a gift long ago, and it sits on the mantle of my fireplace. It sits there and looks cool, but today I thought We could take it down, get some really close looks at it, and uh, see how this thing works. It's a, it's a device that's right up my alley, visually speaking, because it's very mechanical. It looks very old world. It's got all of these different pieces that interact on hinges and little moving parts. It's got kind of a steampunk vibe about it. But Ultimately, all it is, is a pocket sundial. I'm sure you know that a sundial is a, a device that uses the casting of a shadow to roughly tell the time of day. And they call this a, a sundial compass, but I think it is better called a compass sundial because it ultimately is just a sundial. The sundial is its intended function. The compass part of this device is only here to help set the sundial in its proper orientation so that can cast its shadow in the right place. So I thought we might spend a little time looking at this fellow and handling it and learn something about it. And maybe at the end of the video we'll try to set it up as if we were outside in the sun and uh, 
see what we would have to do to do that. So why don't we start out by exercising all the little hingy bits and see see how we can open this up to see the various parts a little bit better. So we've got this curved piece here that looks like a protractor with these numbers on it that are most likely degrees. We'll talk about that in a minute, but it has a hinge right down here. So it goes like this. Rotates up like that. See? And then we have this bit. This is the uh, part of the sundial that actually casts the shadow. That's called the um, gnomon. And that's spelled G N O M O N. The gnomon. And it's got two pivot points here on the ends and this little curved metal bar that provides some resistance to putting the gnomon in the upright position so that it will stay there thanks to this little flat, this little contraption here. So that would go like this, if we can do it. So that's the gnomon up in position. And then the whole top plate hinges up like this. And if we go all the way, we can fully expose the compass area. There's the needle moving. One thing you'll probably notice right away as we watch this needle is that it's a fairly lazy needle, meaning it takes a long time to settle and stop moving. And that's because the the metal that this needle is made of is very weakly magnetized. It's a very weak needle. You know, the, the magnetized needle will align itself to the magnetic field lines of the earth. That's how compasses work. But the more strongly magnetized the needle is, the faster it will align itself. And this one takes a long time. So you can tell that it's very weak. We could even compare it to something like this. This is a simple recreational compass. Who's this made by? Oh, this is a, a Silva. This is actually the uh, compass I used most often when uh, participating in orienteering meets. I would, uh, I put this little cord on it to attach it to my wrist. 
thing you might notice with this compass is that the needle tracks to north very steadily. So if we, if we move the compass around and set it down, it settles into north fairly quickly. as opposed to this little fellow. <laughs> it takes its sweet time. It really takes its time. I'm trying to keep these two devices at opposite ends of the frame because we don't want the needles to influence each other since they're both magnetized. But you can see how much longer the needle on our sundial takes to settle in. And, uh, and this one that I'm showing you isn't even the most extreme example. You can uh, you can search for kind of high-end competition compasses that have these really wide needles that are very highly magnetized and they, they, they settle instantly. If you're moving around in the woods doing a lot of quick direction changes you can look down at a compass like that and know that it's essentially pointing north at all times, at all, any time that the compass is level, that needle is pointing north nearly instantly. They're very, they're very impressive. But this little fellow is, is not like that, and that's okay. Like I said, this is mostly a decorative piece. We can look at the face of the compass, if we can dodge the reflection of the lights. And we can see that it's engraved with the uh, primary directions, north, south, east, west, and then in between east and south we see east, southeast, southeast, and south, southeast. And then we also see degrees all the way around in numbered off in 10 degree increments. There's way more detail on this uh, compass face than the accuracy of the needle warrants, but it does make for a nice looking piece. But in terms of the operation of the sundial, the reason the compass is important is because the sundial will only cast its shadow correctly if it is oriented to true north, and the compass helps us do that. And we'll talk about how we do that in a minute. The other thing that has to be set correctly on a sundial like this is the latitude, meaning the other information that we need to know in order for the gnomon to cast its shadow correctly is how far away we are from the equator, which is our latitude. You hear about 
the terms latitude and longitude. Well, latitude is the north-south direction, and it's measured in degrees. And it represents how far away from the equator we are. So if we lived on the equator, our latitude would be zero degrees. And if we lived at polar north, our latitude would be 90 degrees, and then everything in between. So using this simple device does require us to know a couple of things about our location on the planet, things that probably don't come up very often otherwise. But this is one of the compelling things to me about a device like this. You know, we think about web pages that can tell you something interesting or useful based on knowing where you are on the planet. For example, you might, you might tell a website where you are located so that it can tell you what time the sun sets and rises where you are, or what, the, what constellations you can see that night if the sky is clear based on where you are on the planet. But it's so, uh, it's so easy and understood. Everybody knows how to interact with those kinds of uh, internet resources. But what I like is the notion that you can tell a mechanical device, things that it needs to know about where you are on the planet, so that it can tell you something useful. I love the notion that by the way we set this device up mechanically, we are telling it information about our location that then allows it to tell us an approximate time of day. And I, I think that's fascinating. I love it so much. And we're going to look at the two settings that we need to know about to get this little pocket compass sundial to tell us what it can tell us about the time of day. And we'll talk about those two things first, and then we'll try to do them at the uh, end of the video. Because once we start setting this up just so, just the way it needs to be set up, certain things might be harder to see. So we're going to talk about them first and then try to do them, okay? So what about this protractor? Well, this protractor and the, and the fact that the top plate is hinged is our way of telling the the sundial, how far away from the equator we are, because the farther away from the equator we are, the different the position in the sky 
the sun is as it travels through the day. And that impacts, obviously, where the gnomon casts its shadow. So the placement of the numbers around the edge of this top plate depend on the angle of the top plate being correct for where we are in latitude. So part of using this device correctly requires us to know what our latitude is. And that's a pretty easy thing to find on a map or on the internet. And as you can see, it's not that important that we be exact with that figure out to, you know, several decimal places because the precision available to us in this little latitude guide is not that great. But that's okay. Because again, this is essentially a prop, a decorative item. So to use this correctly, you would need to know what your latitude is. Now, I live in a part of the world that is at roughly 40 degrees north latitude. So I live north of the equator. I live in the northern hemisphere. And I live 40 degrees away from the equator. So if I was outside getting ready to set this up, I would need to know that information so that I could set the angle of this top plate. And so it looks like we would do that by moving the plate against the protractor until the intersection was roughly 40 degrees, like so. So this angle here would be the correct angle for use where I live. So that's one of the settings. Now we'll, we'll spoil that setting by opening the device back up so we can look at the compass again because we said that the other thing that the sundial needed to work was that it needed to be pointed at true north. And we use the compass to help us orient the sundial to true north. So as we can see, we can if we slowly rotate the body of the sundial, the needle in its lazy way continues to point to north. So does that mean that this setting is as easy as just lining up the needle, the north part of the needle with the zero point on the engraving below? Well, not exactly. And that brings us to the second piece of uncommon nerdy data that you have to know in order to use the sundial correctly. And that is 
the concept of magnetic declination. This is a this is a very nerdy video. Sorry about that. In order for the sundial to work, it needs to be pointed at true north. The thing about compasses, though, is that they don't actually point at true north. A compass points to magnetic north, and wouldn't you know it, those two places are not the same place. True north is the place at the top of the world that is the axis of rotation for the planet. The, uh, the axis that the, that the Earth rotates around is, is what defines true north and true south. But magnetic north is not there. Magnetic north is about 500 kilometers away from there. Now, at least, it moves. And so, magnetic north is not the same place as true north, and the, the magnetic lines of force between magnetic north and magnetic south are not even straight. They're wavy. And the the needle follows those lines of force. So, in order to point our sundial where it needs to be pointed, we have to know, for our location, what the difference is between magnetic north and true north, and compensate for that in the way we set it up. Think about, think about this extreme example. What if you were standing halfway between true north and magnetic north, and you were facing true north, and you got your compass out? What do you think the compass would say at that point on the Earth? Well, in that instance, your compass would be telling you that North was directly behind you. It would be 180 degrees off if you thought that its job should be to tell you where true north is. But if you stand directly between true north and magnetic north, that's what your compass would do. So we need to know what that difference is for our point on the earth in order to position the sundial correctly. Now, for me, that declination is kind of small. I live in a part of the Earth where that declination is about five degrees west. That means that if I look at my compass, the needle is pointing at a place that is about five degrees west of true north. So if I know that, 
can compensate for that by looking at the dial and positioning it with an offset accordingly. And this is, this is going to get hard to see. And again, there's no precision work that's going to be happening here, but it'll be close enough. So if we look closely, if I can maneuver the reflections, we can see a zero. This would be straight up north on our little compass dial. And west is this direction. And we can see there's a 10 degree mark right here. And I said that the declination here is about five degrees westerly, which means if we set up the sundial so that our north needle is pointing right about halfway between this zero and the 10, then the sundial itself will be oriented to true north. Now, doing these two settings together, of course, uh, in a way that we can see them nicely in frame uh, is going to be basically impossible. So we'll go ahead and give that up, give that goal up now, and I'll just try to pretend the best I can what I would do if I was outside. So we'll take our top plate and we'll reset it back down to 40 degrees latitude, which is about there. Then we'll set the, the base down on our hopefully level surface. And watch that silly, lazy needle try to settle itself. Now, I have an angle of viewing here that barely lets me see where the needle is. And right about here is the zero point. So right about here is where the the sundial is pointed at magnetic north, and to get it pointed to true north, I need to go five degrees this way. Again, this is pretty sloppy. The needle is all over the place, but it's about there. So if we were outside on a day that is clear enough that the sun is casting shadows and we know our latitude and we know our declination. We can set up our little device here so that it knows these things too. And in this orientation our little gnomon here should cast a shadow. That hopefully tells us the rough time of day. Will it match our watches or our cell phones exactly? No, it won't. For example, the our little our little device here knows nothing of daylight saving time. So, depending on the time of year, you might find that uh, the time from the sundial is one hour off of the actual time for your area. But you would have to know that. You would have to understand that from, the, from knowing the time of year that you're using it. 
also remember that time zones on the planet are wide, right? And the Earth doesn't rotate in time zones. The Earth rotates continually and gradually. So depending on where you are in your time zone, how close you are to one of the edges of the time zone, would be another thing that would cause a uh, cause a delta between the sundial and your watch or your phone. Your phone's time would be based on you know the time at the the center of the time zone. If you were to one edge, the sundial might read a little ahead of time. And if you were on the other side of the time zone, it would read behind. Now we've spoiled our, our setup by picking it up again, but that's okay. Because I'll spend a few minutes before we go listening a little bit to the sounds this thing makes. I guess the most prominent is that rattly, lazy needle. And this great hinged top plate. I assume that this artwork, this F.L. West, is a reproduction of an actual sundial plate made by a company in London. Perhaps there are antique sundials out there made by this company. Have you ever been to a uh, place that had a sundial installed on the grounds somewhere, like a park or a library, perhaps? With those large, permanently installed sundials, they have to be... Um, well, the settings, the two settings that we just did on our little toy sundial here, a permanent sundial would need to have those, those two settings essentially built into it, meaning a permanent sundial installation would be permanently calibrated for the, for the place on the earth that it was set up. I was at a uh, I was at a park-like property last year that had a large ornamental, almost sculpture-like sundial installed on the grounds, and I got a close look at it, and I noticed that the the latitude and longitude of the place where it was installed was engraved on one of the pieces of metal of the of the sundial itself. I'm sure that information was used when the sundial was built and installed to make sure it was correctly oriented. I've also been to a uh, a place that had a uh, a fun sundial laid out on the ground such that when you stood in a certain place, the shadow that you cast on the ground was the shadow that told the time. So you were the gnomon in that sundial, and that was pretty cool.
So if you ever ran across one of these, either an actual antique or one of these modern decorative items, hopefully now you know how to set one up. And those two somewhat uncommon pieces of information that you need to know to tell this humble collection of metal and glass where you are in the universe so that it can return to you a very simple piece of information. What is that time of day? I hope you've enjoyed this small bit of close-up tinkering. I really do love this kind of stuff. Please let me know if you'd like to see more videos focused on a little object or a device as we try to figure it out and learn how it's used. Take care of yourselves. Keep trying your best at whatever your goals are for today, this week, this year, this lifetime. Looking forward to talking to you again very soon. Take care, friends.